Hi everyone, Larry Satchwell here. I'm going to be making some ultimate suet tonight. I'm going to use that towel I made the other day. Now, this has all come about because I put this, I, it's been really cold and, and nasty here, so I, I bought this premium no waste bird seed for the, the uh, bird feeder out there, the classic one. And I put it out there and it didn't have a camera on or anything, but checked on it a, a, about a half an hour later and a lot of it was already on the ground. And then I remembered, yeah, we got this guy. So I emptied it, uh, took it all out, put our, our regular, less expensive uh, black set, set sunflower seed mix in there. And I've got it right here. Now, I'm, this is the, it's really good stuff. It's got corn in it, it's got whole peanuts. I looked for unroasted peanuts in the grocery store, I couldn't find any. I looked for lard, I couldn't find any. That's why I made the tallow. Even the butcher didn't have any pork to give me pork fat to make lard with. So if you got beef tallow, a beef fat is gonna be tallow, lard. And the lard I found the last time I worked with it was a lot more solid when it was hard than this beef tallow. So this is strictly a winter mix. So I'm going to be making a triple recipe. I'm going to put the, the single recipe, uh, very uh, modeled off of the Audubon Society. I'll put that in the description. But I've got 12 cups of this. I've got six cups of uh, beef tallow. That's what that came out to be. I've got uh, two and a quarter cups of cornmeal. And this is, the, uh, this is <clears throat> Bob's Red Mill. If you look at the ingredients, it says corn. No salt, nothing added. I've got some quick oats, and one of my uh, viewers in the, in the last video where I made suet said that this stuff can um, mold on you, so you've got to be careful, but our birds eat this up really fast, and I'm going to be keeping this in the refrigerator since it is the beef tallow. And I've also gotten some feedback on the peanut butter I use. This is the organic stuff. You look at the ingredients, and it says peanuts, no salt, nothing. And in fact, I took a little taste of it, and for my taste, it needs salt. Let's see, I think that's it. I've got my molds ready here, because I really don't know how much I'm gonna make. I don't have any uh, molds from the previous suet. Now, I've already heated this up. I did add some of the uh, sunflower and safflower seeds to here to uh, make this the full 12 cups. I've already heated the beef tallow, and it melts really fast, a lot faster than the uh, lard. It's still on the heat, but Sherry W. suggested in my last suet video that I might re reduce the heat here, take it off, and the heat's been off. Heck, let me move this out of the way here, take it completely off the heat, and melt the peanut butter in that suet. I've got, it, when you triple the recipe, it calls for three cups, and I don't know what this is, it looks like about three cups. Making bird suet is not like making one of uh, Tim's and Alpharetta, his famous pumpkin pies. The ingredients may vary, and you may have some other stuff. If I were to add anything to this, and I had enough time, I would have been gathering some eggshells, bake them in the oven so they're nice and dry, and then you can either in the food processor or a coffee mill, grind them up into a fine grit. grit. But the peanuts here have calcium in them. This is really chunky. And you can use any nut butter. Peanut butter is the least expensive I've found. And this is an expensive recipe as far as, far as suet goes. I'm not supposed to eat on camera. But suet has gone up. It used to be at Ace, I could get a cake on sale for 62 cents. Now those cakes are over a dollar when they're on sale. And the cakes I found at the big box stores are approaching two dollars. Dollar seventy-nine for the the better ones. Now this had a lot of natural oil in it too. And Sherry, it's not melting. 
it. It is sitting there like a lump. Let me stir it a little bit. Yeah, it's melting. It's, it's still lumpy. But I don't think I gave it enough chance. Yeah, I think it's right. You're right, Sherry, it is. Now, before I add these dry ingredients, you can do it two ways. I can pour this into there, which doesn't appear there's going to be enough room, or I can pour that into here, and either way it's going to be close. This peanut butter is melting. So what I want to do here is go ahead and combine these ingredients. So. I'm going to let this cool off a bit. The peanut butter is melted. I hear a kitten in the background. Sounds like she wants to be fed. She's about eight months old. We had six of them and we kept one. And the other ones have all gone to excellent homes, mostly relatives. So I'm going to give this about 10 or 15 minutes. You don't have to worry about it setting up like the lard. You know, I, I certainly don't have room for all this in my refrigerator or freezer to cool off. But the wind chill right now is in the teens outside, so I might just set it on the porch and let it cool. Be back in 10. Okay, it's cool to the sides here. So, one last stir here. And now I'm going to add all of this. This looks a lot different than the last suet that I made because there's no black sunflower seeds shells in here, just the hulls. That peanut trying to run away there. That's the dishwasher you hear running in the background. Is close. All right, I have my priorities here as far as the molds I want to use. I got these little half pint canning jars, and we use these a lot. Can our stuff, and uh, I, I sometimes make um, jelly out of our figs or jams, blueberry jelly. Um, these make really nice little stocking stuffers for our little guests if you make uh, this size of uh, little blueberry jam. I also make my spaghetti sauce and can it in this size because it's just my wife and I and it, one of those makes just about right for a pizza. But these also fit those two uh, bird feeders I have out there and the thing I love about them is you, you can screw them off and bring them back in, clean them up and sterilize them. You have to sterilize them for the uh, canning in there. So I've got my canning funnel and this is the first priority I've got. I want I want to clean these, fill these up. And it looks like that was too much. Ah, a little bit. So a little less than a scoop. I do want to fill them right up to the top. Muffin tins here will be my next priority. I'll we'll start on the far side. All right, and the rest will go in here. So I'm gonna let this sit on the counter here for a while and let it solidify a little bit more at room temperature. And uh, Finish this job up in the morning after it's all settled up. Set up. This is set on the counter overnight. And I think like getting a piece of pie is gonna be the first one out this hard. But it is set up.
and it may not have set up enough. Skip you on the clean rack on this one. I'm going to set this actually outside this morning. I didn't set it out there set last night because I knew that the uh, possums and the raccoons would take advantage of it. But it is about 21 degrees outside, so I'm going to set it outside for a while and put the lids on here. And these I'll just keep in the refrigerator until they're ready to use. So this has been outside for about an hour, I had my second cup of coffee, got to be a little more generous on the plastic wrap, and I think it will come right out of here now, it's frozen. <laughs> Save your suet molds, it's a lot easier. Well, friends, this is not going as I had hoped, but it's real. Once this is uh, set up, I can mold it like Play-Doh. <laughs> well, this is a sticking point. Here's literally, pun intended. I think now that it's too cold. So maybe if I warm it up here a little bit. This stuff that's been sitting on the counter from that earlier experiment is, is nice and uh, malleable. So this is kind of the story of the three bears. Not too hot, not too cold, and not just right yet. So I've given it about five minutes. I put the other ones in the freezer and these are starting to come out a little bit. I think next time, if I did it in a baking dish again, I think I'd put parchment paper down on the bottom. But this is working okay. Especially since you can kind of mold it once you put the plastic wrap around it. And then once this is frozen, I think it'll be easy to get into the suet feeder. All right, into the freezer with this. I'm gonna go get the muffin pan that's been outside for a couple of hours. There's no way these are gonna come out. At least it's in a metal um, container here. So I am I'm going to put this in the oven. I don't know any other way to heat it up, but it's got to get warm, and this may be a complete disaster, and I'll have to start over. Stay tuned. <laughs> well, it's been in the oven. Look at that now, how am I gonna get that out of there? It's been in the oven, 350 degree oven for about five minutes, and it was starting to smell. It doesn't smell bad. Uh, be right back. So if you just watched the first part of this video, 
<laughs> You're gonna be really mad at me. Because this was a train wreck. This was a very start from scratch train wreck. So I'm gonna empty all this stuff into here. I've got some parchment paper because uh, it's gonna be messy. You know, so here's plan B. I'll put this all back in here. It, I, I know I can mix it up. Um, the stuff that it really thawed out fast. So I know this suet is not gonna be any good above 50 degrees. So if you live in Florida, this is not your suet. Plan B, I'm gonna put this back in here. Let the pan cool off. And then wrap these with saran wrap before I refill them. Then put it in the freezer. But this is gonna take a few minutes. I'll be honest with you, that was not easy cleaning this mess up. Stir it up this time, I'm sure this will work. <laughs> he says with confidence. So I've got some saran wrapping for the molds because I didn't want to lap it over. This reminds me of my video with uh, finding that uh, tubing on my leaf cover. I'm going to even put this one in comic mode. All right, so now I can cover these up. I think this is going to work. So I've got it all in here. I was a full muffin tin short from uh, the transfer. I'm going to put this back out in the, in the cold. It's uh, right at 30 degrees right now, so this should freeze up and freeze solid and the birds can't get to it. And I think I'll uh, take the pan out there and scrape it out underneath the feeders. They've been outside for a while now and with a little nudging, they come right out. So I'm going to Put these in the freezer. Uh, I am going to put one out. I've already put a couple of these out, but uh, I don't post a video unless the birds like it. So you may never see this, but I think they will. Thanks for watching.